Hey there, in this episode, I'm gonna teach you how to add background jobs to a Next.js site using Qstash, which is a brand new service that manages background jobs over HTTP rather than a Redis connection, which is very limiting when you're using Vercel. I'm gonna build off our prior episode using Pipedream and Airtable as a database for a Next.js site. And I'm gonna clean up the styles a little bit. I'm just gonna put this on really fast run. You're gonna see me live code it, but it's going to be sped up. So I've added Tailwind to this repository and I've just styled it up just a tiny, tiny bit. There's still issues with the image layout, which I'll fix later. But what I wanna add now is a button to include a new tiny house community from whomever wants to submit one. So we're gonna add another button here to our homepage. I've imported the link from the Next.js component, from the Next.js link component. And then we can add another link to the top here that just links to a brand new page. And we'll call it slash new. Add a community will be the call to action. And then we'll just add a new link component. I'm gonna add React hook form in order to actually collect this information in the form. All right, so we have a really basic form here that just accepts the name of a tiny house community just to show you how this will all tie together. So the next step is to actually handle the form submission. Right now it doesn't do anything. The button will not actually post anything at all. What we wanna do is make sure that regardless of if Airtable is down, that we still will send this data to Airtable and also perhaps do other things, adding this to a Google Sheet or maybe adding a person to a CRM. There's a ton of other side effects that might happen after this has been done. Maybe notify on a Slack channel or Discord. So what we should do here is we should send an event rather than send a request. So what we should do here is still send this event to Pipedream because Qstash has its own token we need to keep secret. So we're going to follow the same pattern we did before and create a new workflow that's just for accepting this request from our front end. So I'm gonna copy this URL here and we'll paste it into our new form. And then we will change the on submit to a different function rather than logging just the data we'll actually use it for sending an Axios request. So don't forget to import Axios from Axios. And then back in our unsubmit handler, we can use Axios to craft a post request to our URL that from Pipedream that handles this data. We'll pass data. So consummate becomes sending a post and then we can, well, let's just give it a shot. So hopefully I have registered the name correctly. This one will be called name. It's the name label, it's the name, name field input. The ID should be name. And we can go here and just click submit. And voila, we have a test event. Our test event should include the same body. Looks like I've included a few more fields that I haven't trimmed out of the code base yet from the uh, example. Let's see here, what did I mess up? 
Well, regardless, we still have the name test and we can still use Airtable and create this single record to add to our table. So I'm gonna look up tiny house friendly resources. The table is tiny house communities. We'll typecast it and the name, we can just correspond with the name from our post request from our form. The name is test and we can later on fill in this data from maybe side effects. We can attempt to scrape the home page and find a Facebook page, an Instagram page, et cetera, and then go from there. So we'll test this and hopefully in our tiny house resources, we will see a brand new tiny house added called test. Tiny house community called test. Look at the views. Just look at our regular, um, I'm just trying to find the main view here. There we go. Test. Awesome. Cool. So we just added a tiny house that was empty, tiny house community that was empty. And I'm going to delete these extra records that we don't need. Great. So now that we have the pipe dream workflow creating new records in Airtable, after that is done, we want to publish an event saying tiny house community added so we can register these other side these background jobs to check the website for an Instagram URL or a Facebook URL, or just notify us in Slack that this has happened. So we can look up QStash and we could publish a topic message. And here's where we can connect our QStash account using this nice fancy QStash token copy paste component in the QStash dashboard. And we can paste it into the QStash token area here. We'll save that and then it will automatically begin to look up topics. So let's go back to QStash and open up the topics section. And here's where we can create a topic and I'll call it new tiny house community added. That's essentially what's going on. So now that a new tiny house community has been added, we can publish a message to that topic and we can just forward the body from our post request. And here's optional fields so we can define how many times we should retry this message if you know our API endpoint is down and we can also delay it or set it to a schedule. It's pretty cool. So there's no API endpoints to uh, that this, this topic is subscribed to at the moment. You can see it accepts a URL. So let's go to another workflow and let's create a side effect background job processing endpoint. We'll just copy this new endpoint, well, let me give it a name, uh, tiny house, let's put it in brackets here. It's good practice to namespace your, your workflows. And we'll say new tiny house community added. And be more specific actually, um, we will, you know, send a Slack message, some kind of notifications, copy this, and then we'll paste it under our new URL that's subscribed to this topic. And we can add as many URLs as you'd like if you wanna separate by notifications versus enrichment versus adding to a CRM. You can separate your logic that way. And if one API fails, the rest of the requests aren't affected, which is really nice for reliability. And then we'll click test. Back in our original workflow that's accepting the tiny house community, we could see that a new message was published, we can head on over to QStash and check our logs, and we could see that it was delivered to our endpoint about seven seconds ago. Heading back to our new tiny house community added subscribing webhook, we could see the same data is posted without interfering with the end response to the user. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. This is just one small example of how you could possibly add QStash to a Next.js site as your background job service and still leverage Pipedream to protect that QStash token from being leveraged in the front end where you don't want it public. You want to keep it hidden so others can't use your QStash account. Hope this was useful. Have a great day.